readers, reviewers, countrymen, lend us your ears. <laughs>welcome to another video on the brothers gwyn today we'll be talking about our top 10 moments of valor the second installment in the faithful and the fallen by john gwyn aka papa gwyn there we yes, go yes we will so uh be aware spoilers uh, are strewn across the path um <laughs> if you have not read valor yeah go away now read it in a few hours won't take you too long it's only what 800 pages um, and then come back watch the video let us know in the comments below if you agree with our choices uh, these are our top 10 moments and a few honorable mentions of valor uh, one of our favorite books ever let's just jump straight into it then at number 10 it is kaiwen stabs everyone <laughs> <laughs> now yeah. this isn't just one moment it's uh, three or four yeah so she... we just collated a few that i think the, the common theme is kaiwen stabbing bad people yeah through the arm through the chest anything like that and she just you know Lots of fun. Well, she has a knife in her hand. She will just stab anyone. You know, eat, you know, friend Connell, or foe. Connell, Morgan, no, Bray. Yeah, and she yeah. she's deadly with a knife. And we just love the fact that she's just, you know, she's been left alone and she's really upset, you know, missing her family. Uh, but still, she's a total badass, I yeah. think. She and becomes she... renowned amongst the best warriors of the land <laughs> for, for stabbing, stabbing them. <laughs> she gets past their guard when no one else can. And it is just hilarious. Yeah, it suits Kaiwen so, so much <laughs> as well. She's just so funny. And you really feel for her, you know, how how worried and upset she is about the rest of her family, mm. that feeling that she's been left behind um, and uh, she finds it hard to make connections in Dunkarig as well. Yeah. Uh, but still, you know, she knows right from wrong. She sticks with her morals and she just mm. knows exactly what she wants to do, which is A, mainly escape, B, stab as many people, mainly Morkant, because Morkant obviously killed Ronan uh, at mm. the end of Malice in the um, Queen Alona ambush in Narvon, which was a harrowing moment. Yeah, I think that um, what it is with Cohen is even though it is funny on occasion that she is stabbing everyone, um, it really plays into her psychology and really just um, it continues that through line that she's feeling abandoned, she's experiencing loss um, and yeah, just great few moments. And our ninth moment is uh, Connell versus Morkant. Oh my word, what a, a duel. duel. It's at the denouement of the battle um, and they are fighting it over who will become Rin's champion. champion. Now she has a bit of taste for the young men so I don't know why they want to even be her champion because she's like what 60 years old? She's 70, scary. Um, with like heavy heavy set wrinkles and all this kind of stuff. But um, I would I not... don't think that's <laughs> the point. Yeah the worrying thing is that she um, she likes to uh, enjoying their company a bit too much. Let's move on to anyway, the moment call. Um, the moment call is just the fact that both of them are injured, aren't they? From mm -hmm. Kaiwen. Yeah, like, both on their them, weak arms. Which yeah. is awesome. And Connell, we know, is a kind of a deadly whirlwind of a force. Morkan is like Tim Roth in Rob Roy. Uh, <laughs> such an, an intense fighter with all of his tricks and all that kind of stuff. And it, of course, and he arrogant. kills Tal, so we hate him. Connell betrays <laughs> um, Callion and the rest of Dunkarig and pushes Kaiwen off of a wall, so we hate him too. Um, <laughs> and Ka luckily, uh, Kaiwen stabs them both. And then the duel after is just awesome. Uh, yeah, I you have no been... idea who's going to win, yeah. because they're both obviously renowned fighters, yeah. and finding to be a champion of yeah. one of the most powerful people and, uh, in the <laughs> land. I love that moment. That it's, I think it's being told from Varadis or Kaiwen's point of view. Kaiwen. Varadis is kind of following um, Kaiwen because she's getting away, and, and she's trying to... I think she stabs them just before, actually, the duel, doesn't she? Yeah. She stabs Stabs Morkan, that's where she stabs him. Yeah. So then Varadis has to like keep her on a tight leash and then they watch the duel. And it's yeah, it's an intense duel, really nice, um, really nice kind of a fight set piece, gets your blood pumping, especially yeah. early on in, in Valor, and it just kind of sets up it just shows that no one is safe in any yeah. position that they're in. You can be the first sword, you know, the most important swordsman in the entire country. But that still doesn't matter because yeah. someone can challenge you at any moment. And even though we don't like either of them, when mm. Connell wins, it's satisfying because I will go through anything. You hate as him long less. As, as, like, yeah, he is the as lesser of two Kent evils. As long as is in pain. As long as Morkant loses and is humiliated, humiliated yeah. it's good for me. And over to number eight, it is... The Kadashim come out of the cauldron oh, they more than and come inhabit out, don't they? the bodies of the Jihar, which is not very Firstly, nice. the Jihar are, in, are intense, aren't they? Yeah. They're basically samurai with um, 
with some beautiful curved swords and they're just renowned for being amazing warriors. Yeah. And you think that's bad enough. Moment. Why are they with Nefer? And then all of a sudden, um, dark demons come spraying out from the cauldron. Yeah. Their souls going inside the Jiha and they just get bigger with red eyes and all that mm. kind of stuff. And that's scary enough, isn't it? Yeah. And it's, I think you see it from a mixture of Corban and Uthis' um, perspectives and <laughs> Kaiwen. Um, and I love how like all, these all their big, reactions are all, kind of all the their, same. Yeah, all their different perspectives huh? morning together and they're like... Yeah. What is going on? Absolutely. Um, because the Jihad on their own are a terrifying force, and now they have demons living within them. Yeah, if that's um, not worrying, then I don't know what is. Yeah. And they pretty soon learn that they can only be deceased through mm. decapitation, which yeah. is hard enough. Um, and it's just. Incineration. <laughs> evisceration. <laughs> decapitation. <laughs> um, and it is just. Um, one of those moments where the epic scale just jumps up a notch. Yeah, the, the um, whole kind of that set piece at the end. Uh, already I was reading standing up um, off, literally off of the chair. And then when that happens, you're just like, well, oh but how can it brilliant? How can it grow from here? Yeah, yeah. exactly. And uh, Nathair's reaction is when he suddenly sees that they're not Ben Alin, they're Kadshin. Yeah. And he suddenly realizes that he's actually the, and the illusion, black sun. Yeah, the illusion of himself being bright star. Yeah. Kinda, comes the, crashing and tumbling yeah, down. Falls down from and the then guys. the fight after then is just awesome where um Bala One Eye, oh, the coolest giant in Ever. all of the realm of giants, um t with his one eye takes the axe from Al Kion, doesn't yeah. he? And Kion gets rescued with Corban and then Gwyneth dies. And Gar, that moment where Gar is yeah. carrying in fact, there is actually a song, um if you've not really heard it, called Gwyneth's Lament, mm. made by Will Musa. Yeah. Um who's Brilliant. And on to number seven. Yes, it is the uh, great battle between Owain, who has recently conquered Duncarig, and Rin, who was actually the spider pulling all the webs together. Yeah. Um, it's a great battle where Evna switches sides. Uh, I think it's told from uh, Kaiwen and Varadis' point of view, isn't it? Uh, Varadis is kind of with um, uh, the warband with Owain, isn't he? And he yeah. kind of switches sides as well. And uh, this, yeah. A lot of switching sides, really. Really great combat. Shows the shield wall just utterly decimate yeah. um, normal shield walls. Bear in mind, the, this is kind of these are cultures that fight like Celts, where they pride themselves on their skill in battle of one versus one. Yeah, and um, they find one person to fight in the enemy uh, ranks. They have a duel basically, um, and then they move on to the next person. Whereas the shield wall comes rolling in like a like a Greek phalanx or a Roman uh, Roman shield wall interlocked, and they just they fight to, as Get to stabby stabby, entity. don't they? Yeah, absolutely. And it's similar to uh, when the Thir sees the ants in in Malice in Book One. The ants, oh you know, no, no matter how many there were, they Thousands. were just yeah swarming upon the boy and the dog and uh, and destroying whatever was in their path. So uh, I think it's a great display of everyone who hasn't seen the shield wall seeing what it actually does to humans. You know, yeah. we saw what it does to giants. the Shechem giants and the Drakes, and oh, that was. Uh, intense yeah. as it was that but against was humans right. as well it's yeah. just devastation mm, yeah I think and obviously you see I love the beginning Evnis is being sent um, in the first charge and you're thinking wait he's with Rin but how is he going to turn this around yeah. and he just him with his cavalry he just veers off to each mm -hmm. side and he just circles around it reminds me of that moment in Braveheart when um, spoiler alert uh, I think uh, I can't remember which, which battle I think it's at like the Battle of Stirling it okay. might be where yes. um, William the, Wallace I, the they I, have the Irish yeah. and, um, <laughs> and then the Irish they all sprint to each other and then they join ranks and like and ah, just how you hugging, doing yeah. and all this kind of stuff <laughs> sorry for my awful Irish accent but yeah but uh, yeah, it's exactly like that where um, it's just the switching of sides. You have no idea what's going to happen. Mm. Um, it's a lot of characters that um, even if you hate them, um, you're thinking, but I hate them on that side, but I hate them on this side as well. I don't know who I want to yeah. win. I know. And Owain, you just think he's such a sucker for destroying Dunkarig. They could have worked together against Rin. And then Rin, she's just so she's just clever. Isn't yeah. She? She's, she's pulled the strings of them all. And, and she's getting works. what she wants. Yeah. And her warband is fresh. They haven't been through, you know, in, in a battle for quite a while. And she's got people joining her side as well. They know who's yeah. going to win. Wayne fights valiantly, but... When they retreat, um, uh, they run into the shield wall. Yeah. And they just crush and they in die. their sandwich. And on to number six. When Varadis confronts Corban, or so nearly has a deal with Corban or Gar. Yeah, that's the first time they they meet. They almost meet, yeah. don't they? And you can kind of see from both points of view. You know who Varadis is. You know who Corban is. Yeah. And you, knowing the characters, I don't know about you, but I feel like they they could have been really good friends, but they were just unfortunately on opposite yeah. sides. 
and after Corban, he does that devastating trick with the wolven claws and they kind of um, spreading fear amongst the ranks absolutely uh, with kind of his little band yeah and then Varadis comes out of the blue and just wants all he wants to do is kill Corban and Gar because Gar killed Ralka Ralka exactly even though Varadis is kind of at war with himself because he's thinking I really like Kaiwen there's a little bit of a, a relationship developing there isn't there but, and is he going to kill um, her brother Corban's brother I, I believe Corban would um, whack him on his yeah bottom. which is why the um, the Eagle Guard ranks close around Varadis. Yes. It's such an awesome moment. He's trying to fight through them, um, push through them to, like, get to, no. Gar, to get to Gar, to get to Gar, and Boss, his friend, just tells him no. Yeah. Um, because they all they know that um, that Gar killed oh, yeah, a Boss dozen. Is awesome, isn't yeah. he? Um, Gar killed a dozen of yeah. the best Eagle Guard, and they know even even He's though like Varadis crazy is great, guy with the Gar kind of is the... just the next level, isn't he? Yeah. And it's just such an awesome moment because you can see, you can see it from both perspectives. Varadis sees um, Corban as the Black Sun, and he sees Gar as the killer of his friend. Yeah. Uh, but Corban, he sees the Eagle Guard, the people who killed his father. Um, and it's just an awesome moment, especially after the the climactic scene um, of killing the camp of Rin's men um, and the army just finding claw marks over all these soldiers thinking, what That's is going on? Yeah, um, I mean, if that doesn't make you scared, I don't know what will. And now onto our top five moments. The fifth is... Macquin versus Orgal. This is the first time I read this in the first draft. I just wept for mm. it. Must have been a few days. Bittersweet. I absolutely loved Orgal. I thought he was just so awesome, so cool, and um, and it's just devastating. You kind of know what's going to happen. Um, it's a little bit like that moment in Spartacus where Spartacus has to fight oh. Tony Curtis, uh, and they actually get to the get to it, don't they? Yeah. But Macquin and Orgal. That moment and then that whole punch up afterwards, I was just so devastated. And you know, um we know we know there's gonna be lots of macro moments cropping up in our top favourite uh, moments yeah. of this series, but that one was such you know, just made me feel yeah. so devastated mm -hmm. at how um how Macro and Orgo had to fight each other. Um, and then Orgold dies, you know, yeah. helping Macron get away and that kind of stuff. And it's just, ah, oh, it's just yeah. horrible. Well, it's basically Reed, isn't it? Uh, Orgold yeah. has been beaten and because he helped Peritus That's escape. it. They give him the um, a seed of the poppy, don't they? Oh. To uh, kind of enhance him, make sure that he can actually stand up, you know. And he's just fighting through the pain. And he's got lattices of scars on yeah. across his body. You can see where he's been beaten to a pole. Yeah. It's just not fair. And the old wolf sits down. And he just says bollocks to this, basically, doesn't he? Yeah, he's about. He, he looks as if he's just about to kill Orgo, mm. uh, but he takes his hand instead. And then the fight that ensues after this, freeing Javid and the rest of the fight, the pit oh, fighters, Lycos, and Danan, Armored Pirate, um, where he uh, Macquin sees Fidel. Fidel yeah. stabs Lycos. Mm -hmm. They do a runner, but he can't get to Orgo in time before Danan oh, when, kills when him. When Fidel stabs him, I was like, yes. Yeah. And then when you saw that he wasn't dead, I was like, no. 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 Um, but it's just another one of those moments. What a climactic end scene yeah. for. It's the last few chapters with Macron at the conclusion of Valor. And it's just just page turning blood All pumping. he's been through since I know. Castell's death. I mean, it, he suffers so much. Um, yeah. And you, you can't help but feel sorry for him, but also scared of him. And he come, goes on to become my favourite character in the series. Yeah. Um, and this is just... We really see this is what's creating him into kind of the cold yeah. force of um, nature that he is. Um, and you really see that he's changed as a warrior and just his brutal, efficient approach to killing people. Yeah. Matt Quinn, to me, is Mads Mikkelsen. Uh, you might have seen him in Hannibal or... Um... James Bond, I think Rogue One, Le Chief, Rogue One, but um, he was also in a film called Valhalla Rising, and he's just an intense warrior. Um, although Matt Quinn does speak, Maz Mikkelsen doesn't speak in that. But ah, uh, Maz Mikkelsen, I think would be perfect to play Matt Quinn. He just has the that old kind of grizzled. Wolf, yeah. yeah, he looks dangerous. Loads of people he? wanted him to be Geralt before Henry Cavill was Geralt oh, on the really? Witcher. But I think Maz Mikkelsen suits uh, Matt Quinn so yeah. much. You know, just this grizzled old veteran yeah. kind of thing with his grey locks and his intense eyes. Intense eyes. And our fourth favourite moment is when Uthus kills Nemain. Oh my word, what a moment. The battle at Murias, the giant stronghold yes. um, as far north as you can go um, in the um, territory of Benoth, um, the last stronghold of the Benothai giants. Um, Nemain is thousands of years old. She is, throughout um, the entirety of Vala, she's built up to be this figure of um, great power great she's like power. galadriel she's like but the... imagine galadriel was like 
eight foot, nine yeah. foot, ten foot tall. She's the, the greatest elemental giant. Yeah. Um, and we see Nithair, Calidus and their ranks outside the city. Um, and there's only a few hundred giants. So you're thinking, well, we know they're giants, but how yeah. are they going to win this? And why is Nemain so confident? Um, and she calls yeah, Nithair like, out. Da, 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 da. Yeah, she, We're not these giant oh, well, the ravens, ravens just that sweep over the, the Jiha. Yeah. The Jiha, which we have seen to be amazing warriors, they just get almost decimated yeah. by these ravens, birds. Um, I'm always scared of birds. They're they're rats with wings. No, William's scared of pigeons. Okay, he's they're scary. But anyway, um, and when Uthus kills men, you know he's a traitor. But mm. it's this moment that he's had this internal conflict um, with Nemain. Uh, throughout the entirety of Vela because he does love her in a way that she's done so much for him um, and he served her for basically his entire life um, and at this moment when he stabs her you see the look on her face as she tumbles over the castle um, yeah. and when Salach, his friend, is battling her, Nemain's champion it's a very emotional moment even though you don't like Uthus um, it's a very compelling moment where you just see that this is really Thousands part, of years of friendship ends in yeah. betrayal by a traitorous git. By this point, that um, you know when he stabs her that there is no return for him yeah. now. But at the time, you think, oh, the, maybe... The, the die is cast. Yeah, you think maybe he can still turn back um, and redeem himself. But yeah. after that, no yeah, way, Jose. Really. No, and uh, Uthus is kind of... Um, he's been, th you know, they're, they're very, very, very old. They're like a thousand years old and they're a couple of thousand yeah. years old. Um, he's known Nemain all of that time, known Balar one eye, known, known the whole clan. He just feels like Nemain staying, looking after the cauldron in that northern city um, and not attacking the humans when the humans are actually probably at their weakest, when they're all at war with each other. She, he feels like she's holding the clan back and he feels like he can do a lot better. Yeah. But he's also get, got to get rid of quite a few members of the of the tribe so he can actually uh, assume power, such yeah. as Balar one eye, who is not uh, an easy, easy to giant <laughs> to um, kill. You can say that again. So, yeah, it's a great moment, and you just see the kind of the devastation. And now on to the next moment. Our third best moment of Vada is Maquin Tahir, or in Halen. the tunnels. Yeah, Halen as well. Uh, and, oh, what an awesome moment. They've just, Basically, they go through the siege, don't they, with Gerda yeah. uh, against Jail. Oh. Alan from Alexandria has a uh, special dislike of JL, <laughs> which I've uh, never seen uh, come across so strongly via um, videos um, or anything on YouTube, and I just find it hilarious to watch. But oh, absolutely, I feel th I feel the hatred, Alan, I towards hate that JL. Man. He is despicable, and our oh, poor Gerda, and he starts flaying her and all this kind of stuff, and it's just not nice, is it? Um, but and, even he's a bit. Um, and then they, yeah, that they, the um, the three, oh, they sorry, were members I'll do of that the, again. Yeah. I tried to say it, and you said okay, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> The three members of uh, the Gadrai, the last Gadrai, the last giant hunters yeah. left, and they are just putting up this amazing fight against Jael and his forces. They're doing so well, and then, oh, yeah, the Git Lycos turns up. With Danan. Oh, and his stupid grappling hooks and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And they just start wiping people out, don't they? Yeah. They, they, you know, Maquin is so close to Jael on the bridge, and then Lycos turns up yeah. with his nasty corsairs and their lovely beards and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, they send Tahir off with Halen, who yeah. is the king, yeah. um, because they all swore an oath to look after of him. And all yeah. So it, I just imagine just these frowned tunnels yeah. um, that are like terrifying, just torches, dimly lit, and then just Orgol, the with massive man he is with a giant bladed axe, yeah. And then Ooh. Maquin next to him. Yeah. Um, and the they just wolf. fight this horde of Vinthalin. And there's a quote where they say they've nearly blocked the tunnel <laughs> with bodies of the Vinthalin. Yeah, because so, Lycos was like, no, I'm sure you can handle it. And one of his Corsairs is like, yeah. no, they've literally nearly <laughs> blocked um, the tunnel. With, yeah. with, with, and he's like, with what? With bodies of our dead. And he, Lycos is like... <sighs> Right, I'll mm. go sort them out then. And then he does with his stupid little grappling And then hook. I think they have um, a rope or lasso that they drag the grappling hook, hook, yeah. forward um, and they cut his ear off. Oh, yeah. And then Orgol drops his axe and surrenders. Yeah. Oh. But luckily, Halen and Tahir get away. Yeah. But again, it's and a moment... And luckily, Orgol only survives until the end of the book. Yeah, it's one of those moments that, again, just establishes no one is safe. Yeah. Um, and you just think... No matter how hard they fight, I know, they're good at that. You die. think even Macron could die at that moment. Yeah. Um, or Olgo, or Tahir, or yeah. everyone. Um, and it's interesting seeing it from Lycos' perspective as well. I really liked Gerda as well. I yeah, Gerda was, cool. was awesome. Yeah. But um, yeah, she meets a grisly end as no, well. So it's I'm a very like sad Gerda. scene, yeah. but um, again, climactic. And even though they are, they are outnumbered and the Vinthalan arrive, um, they put a good fight. 
And our second favourite moment of Valor is when the Wolven attack and then Corbo and the gang retreat and they meet the D-Gad and the Giants with Uthus and all these point of views just converge. Um, and it's probably, i say, the first major epic point of yeah. Valor. Um, we have the Wolven attack where a few members of the gang um, say that, okay, we'll stay and hold them off. Um, and then everyone is like, no. I'm staying as well. Yeah. Essentially, they're not fighting the Wolven Great at moment. first. They're fighting um, soldiers that are pursuing them. And then Wolven come out Turn of nowhere. Up, yeah. And it's just mayhem. Yeah. Um, people dying. Um, you don't know who's going to die because there's so many characters you love. Um, you've already seen that um, Marek has lost his hand. And you're just thinking, what's going to happen next? And then they retreat. Um, and then they see Fetch. <laughs> and they're like, what's going on, Fetch? Um, and they don't know who this massive raven is. And then Uthus and the giants just come out of nowhere. And soon after that, the D-Gad, which have been hunting them, mm -hmm. all come together. And earlier on, you see from Coraline's perspective that they are hunting a gang of giants. But kind of as, you, as you've um, progressed with the story, you've kind of forgotten about that bit. Yeah. And then suddenly it all just clicks into place um, and it all just happens at once. And this mayhem and oh my, it's so sad when um, Heb dies. It's this just amazing convergence of all these four sides, isn't it? Yeah. And it's just, again, intense. It's blood pumping. Yeah. Uh, and the punch up there is, and you're worried that people are dying left, right, centre, above and below. Um, you know, Dath's using his bow with Camlin, and they're all worried, and all this kind of stuff. And then Corban and Storm, and then you've got Gwyneth. And, oh, it's just, yeah. like, just all of these different, you know, all different characters come into play. Each one has their moment to shine. Each one has their moment to die, some of them. Um, and then the giants turn up, and they're like, who on earth is that? And look at that white wolven attacking. They have, like, scars stare everywhere. Off, yeah. And you're just like, that is Storm. And they're like, oh, no, that's Storm. Get away from her, all this kind of stuff. And you're just, your thoughts during that are just, you're so worried for the characters that you love. And you're, you know, cheering them on, trying to get get them to kill the characters that you don't love. And then, uh, and then Coraline turns up with uh, Wrath, isn't it? Um, yeah. Leader of the Degad, who are the giant hunters up in the north of uh, Domine. Uh, and it's just, oh, what a moment! Absolutely love it. And uh, yeah, I think it, it, so that's cool. one of that's one of the moments that I think that Dad does one of the things that he does so well. Where other characters, other point of views, yeah. meet up with this kind of this short period of time, and they part ways. But this one was yeah. you know, meet up in the most glorious of fights. And um, and the stakes are very high. You can't yeah. even climb over them. Stakes. And uh, by this point, obviously, you know that uh, Papa Gwyn is nasty and he will kill yeah, anyone. Yeah, mean, mean, mean. And so you're just scared um, for everyone who's in this. Yeah. So now before we get into our top moment, we'll just name two or three of our honourable mentions because there are just so many more that we could have included. Mm -hmm. And so the first of these is... Uh, when Varadis lets Maquin escape right at the oh. beginning, Maquin and Tahir... Uh, and Orgul, I've discovered that um, Castell is officially dead. Uh, it wasn't an off-screen death where he's coming back to life. He's very dead, uh, unfortunately. And then they're being hunted, being looked for by Varadis. I think Varadis is with um, Kalidus. Yeah. Yeah, he is with Kalidus, is it? And, um, and yeah, and, and he meets up with Matt Quinn. Varadis already knew Matt Quinn from before. He was devastated to hear that um, Castell dies and all that kind of stuff. And then he lets them go. So it gives him a bit of a yeah. head start, which is a great moment. And there's also the tension that you want Varadis to be enlightened that um, Kalidus yeah. is a bad man. Um, and you see that uh, he's told that Romar didn't die from a giant. He died yeah. from a giant, but Al um, Kion. Um, and you see Varadis is moulding over these facts, thinking perhaps it's not as black and white as I yeah. thought it was. And um, Alkyon kind of had a hunch, doesn't he? Yeah. That, um, that, Mac, that Varadis met up with them. Yeah, yeah. Saw them. And I think you see there's more of that relationship growing between Alkyon and Varadis. Yeah. Um, and I think it's just very, it's a very important moment for Varadis' growth throughout the series. Mm -hmm. Um, as he's as he starts to question Calidus and those that he's fighting for. Yeah. And another honourable mention is uh, when Bardai and Storm are reunited oh. outside um, Murias, isn't yeah. it? Up in up in Benoth territory. And what a heartwarming moment! You see these two two figures running at each other, and it's Bardai who Corban hasn't seen for so long. And Storm, they're just uh, you know, if you have dogs, if you're a dog lover, you know exactly yeah. what dogs do if they haven't seen each other for a while, or if you haven't seen them for about thirty two seconds. You know, they start going on their backs, they <laughs> nip each other, they. Uh, lick each other and it's just so sweet and to see that in a yeah. giant wolf and basically a massive wolf that you can yeah. ride and a massive um, hound and a massive hound yeah but uh, basically a mastiff beautiful yeah and on to our last honourable mention it is when Farrell gets a bit tipsy and he has some arm wrestles with some of the warriors of Dom Hain, um, which is attached right next to um, 
Coraline and Corban having a friendly duel, which in involves some dirty play. <laughs> yeah, those um, those those few chapters there are just I think they're hilarious. Where Daft yeah. and Farrell kind of um, at kind of. A friendly competition with each other for Corrin's eye, yeah. and then uh, Corban gets uh, kind of beaten up by her, doesn't <laughs> yeah. he? And then uh, Farrell has a bit of a punch up in the old, the old beer tent um, yeah. with Quinn, the first sword of. Is he the first sword? Yeah, he is the first sword, isn't he? Um, of uh, Doan, and um, yeah, it's 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 really funny and seeing those just kind of normal. Although I don't usually do that, it's not normal to me. But just kind of yeah. those more normal moments where it's a bit less epic and it's a bit more kind of in touch with the characters. And I think you know, I just love those moments. Yeah, and it's also establishes Quinn the um, first sort to Eremon. Um, it's actually, As you really, you just guy. he's tough, nasty, and yeah. you you just don't like him yeah. straight away. Yeah. Um, and you just feel sorry for Farrell, who's a bit drunk and they get into a fight. Um, and I think it really just fisticuffs. and it explores the friendship of the trio, Daff, Farrell, and Corban yeah. some more, doesn't it? So now, enough delaying um, our top moment. Um, so, Ed, do you want to enlighten us? The top moment is Friend in a Dark Place. Now, uh, we've had this massive build-up of chapters where we meet Tuckle, who is Gar's father, and he's with Maykal, the beautiful Benelim. Um, and then... Beautiful is one word. Yeah, Corban yeah. gets <laughs> captured by Braith, and he gets taken to Rin. He's in, basically, a dungeon. He gets taken to the other world, and Azroth, he meets basically Azroth. Satan, says to Rin kill him and all this kind of stuff so she comes back to the um uh, to the normal world not in the spirit world and and then Maykow comes out of nowhere and just saves Corban yeah and or you know Coraline and Co everyone else um they are coming up and they help save Corban as well and everyone meets up and then Garcy's tuckle again yeah. and there's so much going on and then Maykow strides up to um Corban and Corban had seen Maykow in lots of other world dreams yeah. um and uh, he knows uh, he kind of just feels like he recognises Maykow. Maykow says, I'm a friend in a dark place. And oh, yeah. I just love that moment. Another instance of where people converge. You yeah, know, yeah. Tuckle's chapters converge with uh, Corban's. And yeah. it's brilliant. And again, it's just it's very compelling. Obviously, Corban, you feel like, okay, he could actually die. Um, yeah. And he's reunited with all his I friends so again. Scared. Gar is reunited with his father, Tuckle. And Corban is a bit like, oh my word. I never thought that Tuckle had a family. I hadn't really thought about yeah. that. I thought they were dead. Um, but more of Gar's history being unveiled and the extent to which what he has sacrificed to look after Corban. And Corban at this point, before he's thinking the Serendis Glare, what's that about? Um, and now he's like, okay, this is actually a bit weird. I need to um, just mould over what is actually happening. Um, and his friends as well are realising that something pretty special is unfolding. So they are our top 10 moments of Valor. Thank you so much for watching. We hope that you uh, maybe agree with some of these. Please let us know in the comments below uh, if you have any other moments that you love. Just bear in mind, yeah. there are spoilers aplenty. They will be in the comments as well. So don't go there if you haven't read Valor yet, okay? Um, but yeah, please tell us what your favourite moments are. We're sure that there are so many. It's it's like a 700 page book, isn't yeah. it? So, <laughs> and I'm sure there's way more that we could have chosen. It's so hard to find only 10 moments. Well, 13 if we're being a bit sneaky, if we have the honourable mentions yeah. as well. But, you know, thank you again for watching. Um, yeah, um, obviously there's so many moments that we could have picked from. We really enjoyed talking about some of our moments. The nostalgia that we feel, I think because... Obviously, we get to talk to Papa Gwyn himself. Um, <laughs> that we really feel like these characters are quite close to our hearts. Yeah. And they almost feel real. He's been telling us stories about oh, them they are real. for years and years. Yeah. And so just talking about them again, we hope that you feel um, even just a slither of that nostalgia and emotion um, when we really relive these together. So in the meantime, as always, stay safe. Truth and courage. Truth and courage. The Brothers Gwyn. <laughs>